case. All right, so we are down to one minute till. Mm -hmm. du, 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 cool. Jennifer Hammers is there, and Doreen has checked in, and I guess we'll go ahead and do a uh, little pre-show tease. Hey, everyone, welcome to episode three. Um, got a fun show coming up that we're just going to start here in just a minute. What you've been watching is just the pre-show while we kind of check everything to make sure it's all running. Uh, we have another Artist of the Week coming up this week. Uh, plus, we will have Mr. Jared Von Jekyll joining us live via Skype from Florida uh, to talk about his short film, The Tooth Fairy. Uh, he will also be giving away one of his masks, so that's kind of cool. Uh, plus tonight we will have the first ever fart jar drawing something that people have been waiting for a year for uh, and then towards the end of the show we're going to have open phone lines to talk about a few different subjects and stuff like that so I believe we are probably right at 8 o'clock so let's go ahead and run our opening credits successful test of this equipment no sense worrying about it now why worry each of us is wearing an unlicensed nuclear accelerator on his back everyone welcome to uh episode three of monster vision um thank you all for joining us uh, those of you who are returning for the second time thank you very much for uh your 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 loyalty uh those of you who are just joining for the first time we hope you really enjoy what we're going to be doing here uh i'm your host and uh sitting over here on the computer is uh my co-host natalie smith uh she is running the whole show all the electronics and then sitting over here in the big chair is our paranormal researcher tony garrison how you doing today tony i'm doing good how about you it's a day that's for sure that's for sure how about you natalie i'm doing good cool good. um so anything noteworthy in the last week for you guys at all going on in your personal lives or anything like that well i've been trying to uh broaden my scary movie horizon here i watched uh, i'm drawing a blank on the name uh, rosemary's baby rosemary's baby yep that was a uh, that's creepy. It was creepy for 1967, I think it was. I, I'm going to admit, I've actually never seen it. I really I really do need to take some time to watch it, but uh, I don't get to watch much TV at all, so uh, that's that's hard. So, How about you, Natalie? Anything fun and exciting in your life? Uh, my daughter started school this week. Yay! Yeah. What grade is she in? She just started seventh grade, so she's officially a middle schooler. Oh, cool. So it's super exciting. All right. Excellent. Well, as you guys know, and some of you may have seen, um, I had kind of an exciting night a few nights ago when I accidentally launched our merch store uh, way ahead of schedule. Um, it's actually kind of funny because I, I, I was just kind of experimenting and I thought it was the kind of situation where I could load up a bunch of designs for the items. Um, and then when we were ready to officially launch, we could actually hit like a go live button and it would make everything happen. Uh, I come to find out as soon as I uploaded the first thing and got it all configured, it automatically launched the store. So then I was like, oh my God, I didn't have 
any materials ready. I had no graphics done for advertising, no, no anything done. So I ended up staying up till about three o'clock in the morning in order to, uh, get all the other designs uploaded and all that kind of stuff. So, um, it was totally unplanned and a complete mess and it cost me a lot of sleep but the good news is our merch store is actually up now and we have some original t-shirt designs and it's actually not just for t-shirts they can put it on coffee mugs they can put it on a bunch of stuff so uh in the description of uh the video here you'll find a link to the merch shop um you can go there you can check out what we got and stuff i ordered some shirts for myself because i want to see how the quality is and what they end up looking like and i'm hoping by next week i have them and if i do uh, i will give you a good honest review of whether i like them or not and if they're subpar, we may look at getting them done somewhere else. But uh, there's a lot of podcasters that use this service and they come highly recommended by them. So I figured it's worth checking out. So uh, let's see. Also, um, I want to give a special thanks out there to Mr. Rick DeLaurier. Um, basically just because he is such an amazing fan of mine. Uh, and, it, and it's not just a fan of mine. I see a lot of what he posts and a lot of the stuff that he likes and all that kind of stuff. And I've got probably five or six people that names completely dominate in the fart jar. Like two thirds of that fart jar is just these five people. Um, but Rick is even a little bit more than those five. Uh, I don't think there's ever been a single post that I've ever done that he hasn't liked and shared and all that kind of stuff and it's not just that he's doing it for me i mean i see him doing that for so many other artists that are out there on latex mass central and all that kind of stuff that it's like you know he's he's like a real big cheerleader for like everyone out there and, and he's an artist as well so uh, a special thank you rick um so uh i do want to take this down just a little bit uh because i do want to address something that's uh, kind of personal and stuff so natalie can you bring the lights down just a bring the lights down all right excellent um i just want to make a real quick announcement because um today actually is the one year anniversary of my uncle dave's passing and it's been kind of a tough thing because um he is the reason that this show exists uh he helped me get through a lot of really difficult times in my life and he built me up and put me on a pedestal that i am still to this day not worthy of being on um but it taught me a lot of lessons in the fact that um all you need is someone to believe in you. And if at least one person believes in you, you can do things. And he inspired me to take this show, which I was kind of doing years ago uh, in a much smaller format. And instead of just using it as something that I can promote my own work and my own self, I kind of realized that the altruistic nature that he had and how supportive he was of me is something that I should pay forward and do for other artists. So I just wanted to take a moment to say that I'm kind of dedicating this show to him and uh, to, to the altruistic nature that he inspired. And I'm, I know that a lot of the viewers are kind of understanding that this show is not just about me, not just about us in the studio, but about bringing a lot of other artists into this and helping people who maybe don't have a way or don't know how to promote themselves so that they can kind of get viewed and stuff so i think the message is starting to catch on and that's really cool um but uh yeah it's been kind of a tough day but we're gonna put all the hard stuff behind us and like always we are gonna have fun so enough of the sadness let's get the party going and let's have a really fun show natalie let's let's make this place rock okay That is definitely better. <sighs> All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and let's go back to normal mode now. <sighs> All right, that's fun. Oh, oh. wrong button. You have to hit the stop. There we go. Okay, so now that that's all off of our chest, uh, Uncle Dave, I know he's up there watching right now, and I'm sure he's going to absolutely love what we got going on. So one of the first topics that we're going to talk about is funny haunt stories. Now, I'm going to admit, I put a lot of calls out there for people to, a lot of posts asking people to call in. We were hoping to collect enough phone calls to make a segment that would really uh, be able to kind of last with stuff. Um, but we actually got very, very few calls. And, and it's kind of funny because 
we're giving away a free t-shirt to the funniest one of them. So what we decided to do is, since we don't have enough phone calls to make a full segment, we're going to keep the recordings that we got. They're going to roll over. So if you do have funny haunt stories, you can still call. Call in live to the show right now or, uh, or later during the open phone lines or 24 hours a day. That phone line is available. Give us a call. We'll put you in the file for that. And then perhaps on the next episode, we'll run all these recordings. And the funniest person is going to get a free t-shirt so um i have a funny haunt story that i'll go ahead and share and this one was uh from several years ago when we were running our our uh, backyard haunt and um we had this back porch that was set up as kind of a mausoleum with coffins and all kinds of stuff and uh, we had the stained glass window that had an image of an angel that was impaled on a giant spear we had these fake candles that were all set up and then we had a person in costume who looked like a monk in monk's robes but it looked like a statue uh, we used that spray flex stone on him and everything like that he literally just looked like a granite statue that would come to life and this mom and kid, they they come into the entrance of the mausoleum and they're already freaked out because this is about halfway through the walkthrough when when Jaden, who is a friend of mine, started moving. And when he moved, we also had a person in one of the cost uh, one of the coffins that was a, in a skeleton outfit sat up and started reaching for them. This mom and kid freaked out so much that they jumped backwards, they hit the wall, and they discovered that behind the um, the scene setter's plastic backdrop was actually a sliding glass door. They grabbed the handle, spun the door open, and went into my house. <laughs> and, of course, all the lights are off in the house because we wouldn't want those lights bleeding. So they were in a pitch black dark house. They had no idea where they're at bumping over furniture and stuff and we all have walkie talkies on and all of a sudden I hear my I, I hear everyone starts going I think there's someone in the house and everyone starts freaking out and uh, I think it was my wife like ran into the house to try to find these people and, and her mic was live as she's going there and you can actually hear this kid crying just tears bawling the mom like it's okay it's okay no we'll get out we'll get out and they were freaked out because now they're trapped inside it was hilarious so that was uh that was pretty funny but uh natalie you got something funny that happened at a haunt i do i have a really good story um so 2015 we moved to california and did a little home haunt and that was really the first time that my daughter has experienced any sort of like you know we would we go trick-or-treating, but not like a haunted house. Well, in 2016, I got my first job at a haunted house, and I drug my family along. And um, it was family night at the haunt, and so that's like the night you go and practice and kind of do walkthroughs and bring your family out to, um, to check it out and everything. Well, then, um, very first haunt, very first like first walk through ever and she's nine years old and we walk up and they told us we could say no scare and they won't scare the kids uh-huh. well the guy was like why wouldn't we scare you <laughs> and i'm like because she's a child and i thought they were messing with me so we get in there and we go and it's it's one that goes really dark i don't want to well it's not open but we get in there and we're the only three people in there mm-hmm. and we sit down and it's it's a jailbreak situation basically. And they pop out and the guy, great actor. He's an amazing actor and he's a slider and he does a great job. Well, the lights are flashing and he comes out and obviously there's nobody else in there. So he's coming after us and my daughter didn't know what to expect. And so she is, I told her, I was like, just keep your eyes closed. Just keep them closed. Don't look. It'll be over in a new minute and it'll be okay. Well, she happened to open her eyes when he was like this, right? <laughs> like right there. And I've never in my life heard her scream bloody murder before. And I'm like, we broke her. We, we just, we broke her. <laughs> Very first night, not even an hour into the thing. My whole, like, you know, my dreams have just, we broke her. Nice. And then uh, we finally get done, and she, they're like, okay, now on to the next one. And she's like, no, I'm not leaving. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, honey, you have to leave. And everybody broke character at that point and was like, it's okay. I'm so sorry. I can't believe it. I'm sorry. It's okay. See, I'm not going to hurt you. And we were finally able to get her out, and I was like, she's done. She's never going to go. There is, like, seven other attractions to go through, and she's like, nope, not doing it. 
Well, we talked to her, and thankfully, just a few nights later, she became a bunny <laughs> in one of them, and it was so awesome. And she loves haunted houses, and she's grown already in the last few years, and she's a creepy clown sometimes, and she loves it. Nice. So, it was a good one. So, I, I don't know the term, not you say a slider? Yeah. Oh. What's a slider? Oh. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, Tony here is a complete virgin when it comes to <laughs> haunted house places. Uh, however, he is going to be de-virginized here uh, when they start to open up. We're going to take him out. Uh, so, go ahead, Natalie. Tell them all about what a slider is. So, a slider, they're super talented. They they have knee pads, and they've got these flicker glove thingies. I don't know what they're called. I'm sorry. Um, but the, the surface of whatever they're going on is super smooth, and so they'll take a running start, and they'll just slide across it. And it's, you don't expect it if you're walking through a haunt and you don't know that they're going to do that. They're super talented. It's a lot of work. I'm sure they do more than that. I oh. don't know all the details because I'm not a slider. If you do know, you could call and tell us. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of times what they'll do if they've got if they've got the right environment, they, they work best when they're on concrete or asphalt or something like that. And um, I think it's concrete or whatnot. Uh, we were at a haunted house a few years ago and they had a lot of smoke that was just kind of like all over the area. So you, it was like walking through a fog and they had this one area that was set up where the sliders would be able to run and just kind of like slide on their knees and come in. And a lot of them had sparking gloves where they have like the little contacts and as they're sliding, they're dragging their hands and also off their knees. And it's literally sending like a shower of sparks behind them. If you don't see them coming, they, they get they, they'll get you because it makes a noise and you know all that kind of stuff. Your story reminded me also of the year that we went to the um, we have we have the Six Flags um, Discovery okay. Kingdom out here uh, in Vallejo, uh -huh. and we went there for the Halloween once. And we took my daughter Sydney, who was still kind of a little bit on the young side and had already developed a complete fear of clowns. Oh, yeah. And we went through one of their walkthroughs that happened to have a few clown actors and Sydney knows, you know, she didn't really care for it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but she, she knows they're just actors, but she still doesn't like it. We got out of it and we were actually kind of not far from the exit, kind of regrouping with everyone that was in our group and stuff. When all of a sudden one of the haunt actors in a full on clown costume comes out of the fog that was inside that area right at the exit and starts walking right towards us. And he's actually doing a perfect impression of um, the voice from Scream when they're making the phone calls and they're saying, Sydney, blah, you know, saying whatever. And it just happens that her name is Sydney. So this clown <laughs> comes out of the fog. I'm going to kill you, Sydney, and walking right towards us. Dude, Sydney flipped out because it's like, how does that clown know my name when he's coming to kill me and all? And he ended up walking right past us, but it was hilarious because she was sure that he was coming right for her. And to this day, Sydney hates clowns. So, yeah. But John so. doesn't like clowns either. My boyfriend, he no. hates clowns. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it came out on his birthday a few years ago, so we took him. Because <laughs> I'm a great girlfriend. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, if you've got funny haunt stories, definitely call us up and we'd love to hear them. And again, what we'll do is if you leave us a recording, we will turn it into a segment probably on the next episode. And what we're going to do is we're all going to keep little scorecards and we're going to rate them like on a scale of one to 10 or something like that. And then towards the end of the episode, we'll turn our scorecards scorecards over to Tony. Tony will tally them up and stuff. And then he will announce the winner of who gets a free t-shirt and stuff. So uh, we'll do that. Natalie, why don't you go ahead and get uh, Jarrett connected via Skype and uh, we will start running with him because that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, did, uh, Tony, did you ever have a chance to uh, look at his movie? Um, I don't know if I, I don't think no, I sent you the link. No, I don't think so. Yeah, okay. I saw. Um, so I, don't, I, I think I saw something somewhere about it, though. I think, or we were talking about it. Yeah, and brought it up. I, I know I said I was going to send you the link, and I think I totally forgot on doing that because I only have a million and a half things going on and stuff. But uh, no, nah, it's cool. We're going to actually. Well, we'll. We'll, we'll, we'll get him going. So is he all right? I think so. Cool. All right. Uh, hey there, Jared. How are you doing this evening? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can. How awesome. you going? How's it going? I am doing absolutely perfect. Oh, man. So before we start talking about stuff, how's the weather over there right now? 
Um, it's it's okay right now. It seems that the path of the hurricane changes every five seconds. So okay, now just so our everyone's viewers... definitely got their gas and water. That's for sure. Good, good. <laughs> so just so our viewers all know, you are in um, Atlantic Beach, Florida. Is that correct? Just a little bit north of Daytona. Yeah. Okay, and, and when I was I was out here last night kind of looking at weather and stuff, because I was actually afraid you were going to get hit and we'd have to reschedule this whole thing. Um, but, man, that it, last time I checked, it looks like it's heading straight for uh, Daytona, which is just south of you guys. So is it still there? Yeah, uh, I mean, the last time that I saw it, it's supposed to go just right up the, the east coast, but kind of out in the water, so... We'll definitely get the tail end of it, but I don't know. No one knows, right? It could change and go the other direction. They don't know. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a native from Southern California. I was born in San Diego, lived most well, lived first half of my life in Southern California. And when you're a native of Southern California, you just get used to earthquakes, and they literally become no big deal. I moved out to North Carolina, and every time someone would find out that, uh, oh, you moved out here from California, you must have got tired of them earthquakes and stuff. It's like, well, not really. I was in one hurricane, and I don't remember what name it was, but a California boy on the East Coast during a hurricane, I slept the whole night in a bathtub looking at the ceiling, certain that that roof was coming off. I don't know how you guys do it, but uh, we will be checking in with you after the storm to make sure you're still all right. So, But hey, let's talk, that. let's talk now about... Um, you, about you. You, you, you are not only a mask maker, but you are also a filmmaker. And I want to bring some special recognition to that because of the fact that, you know, the fact that you're doing both of these things. I mean, you are really, really, really ardently pursuing your dreams. So tell us, tell us about that, man. What's that like? Yeah, thanks. Um, I definitely don't do it alone. You know, I, I always have, you know, my crew of, of friends and my partner who I work with. He, he's a very talented photographer and he's the one that shoots it. You know, he's the camera guy. He's, he's the one that makes it look the way it is. So I couldn't do it without him and the people that I work with um, to make those. The films are definitely a group effort, you know. So I work on the masks. That's, that's me, you know. And then I bring in other people, talented people to work on the films with. So it's, it's, it's a lot of, uh, a lot different. It's good to have that balance, but, um, you know, I mean, I've always had interest in film and stuff like that ever since, you know, I was a kid, mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, I really adore John Carpenter. Yeah. Um, he's one of, you know, my big, uh, directorial heroes. Um, I just, you know, I like his, his approach to, uh, his filmmaking, the, uh, the fact that, or his approach that, uh, simplicity is engaging, yeah. that, that idea is, is, is so key. I feel like, and I like to implement that in my films. Okay. I feel like a lot of movies, you know, today are just like so over explained, Damn. right? So they give you all the information and there's no mystery. There's no mystery. It's good to have some mystery in a story. Absolutely. So, I agree. So now, how long have you been making films for? Um, really, like my first film was in high school and that was, <laughs> it was awful. It was terrible. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was very incoherent. It didn't make any sense, but, uh, it's just, it's just something that I've always wanted to do. That's why I started making masks was to put them in front of the camera uh -huh. and to make the monster come alive. And that's, that's what I wanted. So, uh, and now, like, as I'm getting older, I'm realizing, wow, story is very important. So mm. <laughs> let me, let me learn how to craft a story. And, uh, that, that's, that's really what I've been developing over the last couple years. And, um, but yeah. Now, now, are you going to any kind of film school or have you been to film school or are you just completely self-taught? No, I've never been to film school. I've never been to any, like, art school at all. Um, I was always too way too poor to go to any, like, creative college or tech school or whatever you would want to call that. Um, so, I, I mean, all of what I know is self-taught. I just, you know, I, I watch a lot of movies. I've learned, um, you know, from others. And uh, we just try and try again. It's a lot of trial and error, right? 
Cool, cool. Now, I used to act on stage and I used to build sets and stuff. And then, of course, you know what we do here in the studio and everything. I completely understand that, you know, it takes a small army to perform some of these kind of things. And it only works well when everything comes together. Um, and I've seen, I, I mean, I must have watched that Tooth Fairy movie probably about a dozen times, just kind of really looking at it and studying it and stuff. And it is it's literally beautiful from top to bottom. Uh, the cinematography is it is great in it. Uh, the voiceover is really just, I mean, creepy, make your skin crawl. Uh, all of the little things, little bits and pieces. So now, what parts exactly, aside from the mask, was part of like your vision? You know, just kind of explain, because because I get it. I know a cinematographer is the one who gets the perfect composition and lighting and stuff, um, and then the director is the one who kind of tells. So, what parts of that were specifically your contribution? Um, I mean, the, the most of it is my contribution. I mm -hmm. couldn't have gotten any of it done without the people that I was with. But okay. you know, I do. I make the costume. I do the mask. I create the monster. I write it and then, you know, I'm, I'm telling everybody what to do and then I edit it and I get everybody, you know, everybody's schedules in line. You know what I mean? I, the, the job yeah. of a director. So okay. um, it, it, it's 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 key. But um, I mean, the vision I had for the Tooth Fairy was I really wanted to do like I'm also a big fan of Guillermo del Toro mm -hmm. and I really wanted to do this gothic fairy tale type of short film. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to do with that. I had, uh, we did the Nightmare Man last year, and that was definitely my callback to the slasher films mm -hmm. that I love, um, Carpenter and so forth, all of that that um, nonsense. But um, so we did that last year, and I wanted to go a different route this year, and I think it turned out really nice. Like uh, I'm happy with it. Oh, I think I think it's beautiful. I, I told you after I watched it, we were ta we were messaging back and forth. It, it, I mean, it's an amazing short story, and as long as people, um, as long as people kind of understand that it's not going to have a whole lot of like character growth and development stuff like that, because it's packed in a, you know, a small package. But if you just look at the short film and you look at, I mean, it, it'll give you goosebumps. It's definitely creepy, and it really left me wanting to see more of it. And that I think is the success in the fact that. If this were a six minute long trailer of something that was an actual two hour feature film, I would be like, oh, dude, I can't wait to see that because just the trail, just the six minutes of trailer looked awesome. Now, we were going to run it here on the show so all of our viewers could see it and stuff. Um, but we're not going to actually run the entire show because I really want viewers to go to Jarrett's uh, YouTube page. Again, in the comments, uh, the description of this video, there is actually a, a link to his page and a link to the video. After our show, go check this out and watch it. But what I do want to do is I want to go ahead and run the trailer just to give everyone a little taste of what we're looking at. So, Natalie, can you bring that up and let's run with that, all right? Yeah. screen icon and the there we go. Yes. <laughs> 
Just double click real quick on the page somewhere and it'll bring up the bottom. <laughs> That's okay. Click over to uh, anywhere. There, there you go. Now go to Skype. All right, Jared, you there? Yes, sir. Hey, man. So, okay. You know, I'm sorry. That does not look like an untrained amateur's work at all. I mean, the lighting, the the framing, the music, every single thing in that is like screaming to tell a complete story. So. Again, viewers, uh, go to that link and watch this thing. It really is artistically. And, you know, you brought up Guillermo, uh, Guillermo del Toro. And I'll tell you what, you're absolutely right. You know, when I watched it that first time, I was like, man, that is dark and spooky and creepy and stuff. And I didn't connect that. But now that you mentioned that, it's like, yeah, you know, it fits right in with that whole kind of pan labyrinth, just kind of grittiness and what, you know, kind of what he's known for. So, dude, that's some awesome work, man. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank oh. you so much. All right. Now we are, uh, Jarrett is going to be hosting a mask giveaway. He has got a mask that he has made that is one of his creations. And um, he's going to actually give that away live on the air right now. So Natalie is going to want to make sure that our phone line is open because we are going to do a trivia question. And so those of you who are hoping to win a mask, Jarrett, what's the name of this mask? Um, I don't know. It's a leper <laughs> okay. or a mummy or whatever you want it to be. It's really scary looking. That's, it, that's it, for sure. It is, you can it is extremely, guarantee scares. Yeah, it is extremely grotesque for sure. So, all right. So here is the trivia question. I posted a little hint on the Monster Vision fan club, uh, which, by the way, if you're watching this video and you are not a part of the Monster Vision fan club, you're going to want to join because you get all kinds of little inside tidbits and stuff. So. For those of you who watched the last episode, and for those of you who got the little hint in the club, there is a specific movie that is referenced at the very end of the video, all the way past the credits and everything. It's kind of like one of those little Marvel Easter egg uh, things. The first person to call in to the phone number that uh, Natalie is going to bring up here, it's our regular phone number, the first person who can call in and identify what movie it is that I'm kind of doing a parody of will win this mask from Jarrett Von Jekyll. So, all right. Well, Jarrett, um, so what's your next project? Are you going to, uh, what's, what's, what's next on uh, the, the table for you? Um, well, right now I'm just trying to get through the season. I have a lot of orders to do uh, and take care of and getting people their costumes out. Mm -hmm. And, um, no, I'm, as I'm far in, as I'm films in, I'm, go, I'm films. Uh, what do you got planned? Yeah, as as far as films go, uh, I have about four or five different uh, scripts uh, that I'm working on, or that are in progress, or you know, ideas, film ideas. I don't know which one I'm going to go with yet. Um, it's kind of whatever falls into place. These things really just have to fall into place, and when one thing falls into place, all, everything else falls into place. And if it doesn't, then you can't try it too hard. You can't push it too hard or else it's not going to come out right. So I just, you know, got to go with the flow. Cool, cool. I would, I would love to do filmmaking. I, I think that that's, that's really fun. But I, I especially think it's cool that you make masks for your films and then you make films for your masks. And that's actually one of the things that got me into the mask making. But we were doing the haunt thing and we always felt that we were limited uh, by, you know, what we could do because of the mask. So it's cool when you have kind of a, a dream and a motivation and then uh, you have, you know, something that you work towards and then you incorporate those things. So doing the mass making and then making films, we were doing the haunt that led to the mass making and all that kind of stuff. So very, very cool. Right. So, all right. Well, oh, yeah. Jared, uh, let's see. So anything else going on? I mean, any, anything else? Um, well, I mean, we, we did just, we got, uh, uh, oh. An award yeah, you know, for I, the short film. I, for, I forgot to write that down. Right? No, yeah. So, what is that award? Tell us about that. Um, that was for best uh, horror short and for the costume design. And um, that it, it's more of a, a, an online film festival mm -hmm. specific to horror. 
called Creepy Tree Film Festival. Cool. And we just also got into, uh, we got official selection for oh. Southeast Regional Film Festival. We have a caller that's calling in. Natalie, you want to go ahead and bring them on? Ooh. Hello. Hello, Hi, caller. I have, I have the uh, answer for the trivia question. Okay, first off, what is your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Ashley. I'm calling from uh, Clearwater, Florida. Oh, you're a neighbor. Cool. All right, Ashley. So what uh, what film is it that is parodied at the end of the credits of my last episode? Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Congratulations. You have gotten hey, it. Ashley. Excellent. Yep. Awesome. You got it. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, what we're going to do is uh, we have your phone number. Natalie is going to make a uh, note of it. And uh, what we'll Thank do is you. as soon as we get off the air here, uh, you're going to get a text message, not from this phone number, but from a different number. And uh, it'll tell you what you need to do to uh, to claim your prize. So congratulations. And uh, hey, Jared, go ahead. Talk with her. <laughs> how far How far do you guys live apart hey. now? Um, I actually live in Maryland. Uh, well, I'm I... Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, so, I'm, so I, I, I know together, Ashley. We were like pretty close friends. Yeah. So we oh. still are. Well, that's awesome. It's a small world that we live in. Cool. Yeah. Right. Now, right. Ashley, have you seen the Have you seen the <laughs> film? Oh yeah, for sure. Cool. And what, I loved it. What did you think of that? I think it was just absolutely breathtaking. Like I've seen how how he started off and where he's at now, and I'm just like super proud, and I'm like one of his biggest fans, probably. Absolutely cool. Well, that's thank kind you of the, so much. That's that's kind of the whole point of this whole community thing. So, well, hey, Ashley, sure. thank you, thank you for watching, thank you for calling in, thank you for being supportive, and we will reach out to you to get your address and all your information so we know where to send the mask to. All right. I agree, thanks. Uh, and Jarrett, uh, thanks, Ashley. Hey, thank you very much for coming on the show. This is really cool. I, I love that we can share all of these small people and how talented they are and stuff like that. And I said it before, and I tell you, ten years from now, you're not going to be where you are now. Not you keep doing what you're doing. I think you have got a long, uh, awesome journey ahead of you, and you're going to look back on all of this and be like, that's where it all kind of started you know with these small films and you're gonna have a big old crew i i can see someone doing that so jared thank you very much thank for joining you so us much. and we definitely want to have you back at some point down the road and of course i will message you after this weekend to make sure that you didn't get washed out to sea all right yeah, absolutely thank you so much for having me you bet jared thanks for being here all right, have a good folks. One. Again, Jarrett Von Jekyll. Let's make sure when you get off here, go take a look at this film. It really is like it's it's really really good. It's it's again, don't go into it thinking that there's going to be like this whole intricate storyline and all that because it's so short. But just when you see what you see, it'll give you goosebumps and it will make you want more. So. All right. So, okay. So we have another topic that we're going to talk about when we go to open phone lines. And that topic is going to be, and we'll talk about it real quick right now. Which do you think is better? And you guys can shout out comments on the line too. Which do you like more? Bloody, gory type horror movies? Or do you like more of the kind that crawl underneath your dome and get in your brain and stuff? Natalie, what's your thoughts? I like the psychological ones. Okay. And why is that? I like it when it's not so predictable. Okay. It's better when I don't know what's going to so, happen. So like, so, like, name one of your favorite creepy, scary movies. Seven. Seven. Okay. I can dig that. I, I totally like that movie, too, yeah. Even with Cell. All right. So I had a whole list. <laughs> now, how about you, Tony? What do you think? Well, I, I think I got a weak stomach, so I can't handle the really gory <laughs> stuff. But uh, what was the uh, watched Mother... Have you seen that? Mm. Oh, um, with um, the, it was recent, right? Yeah, it yeah, was the yeah. New one. yeah. Yeah, that one was. It was pretty wackadoo. Yeah, and, <laughs> you need uh, to watch that more than once. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, even Rosemary's Baby, that's right up there with psychological. Although there's some pretty, uh, you know, disturbing scenes in that one too. Um, yeah, I guess I just can't handle the the guts and the blood and guts. <laughs> I will come out and admit I don't watch very many movies. Um, I have never seen any of the Halloween movies. 
I have never seen any of the Friday the 13th movies. I've seen little pe- bits and pieces of it. I've seen a few of the Freddy Krueger ones, and I did like him because Freddy is a character. He's funny, but right before he kills someone, he always says something that's kind of funny. So I can I can kind of get on with him. But I will agree, uh, I don't have a problem with the blood and guts. I just sometimes find it gratuitous and kind of over the top. But the psychological of getting into the brain and really scaring people, that that to me is, I think, far scarier. I really like the um, um, Insidious series. Some people poo-poo them and stuff, but I really like those because they're, they're of a supernatural nature, but yet it's one of those like, it could happen, maybe. We don't know. I mean, that's part of that whole world. I just don't find that someone who comes back from the dead 20 times and kills all the camp counselors or whatever the exact same way over and over, I, it, you know, it just it doesn't do it for me and stuff. So that's a, that's another topic that viewers can call in. Uh, leave us a recording and tell us and, and tell us what your favorite scary movie is in that genre. So, um, but okay, let's move on. So we do a little part of every show where we do an artist of the week, uh, and the whole point of this is to take uh, another small time, like I like to call them, garage artists such as myself, and just tell a little bit of their story, show some of their work, and have people kind of learn a little bit about them. Uh, so. So that people can have an appreciation for um, the work that they do and, and kind of have a little backstory behind the products that they might buy from them. So the guy that we got coming on this week is uh, Josh Spradlin of uh, New Berlin, uh, New, New Berlin. I wrote it down. My writing is horrible. Uh, <laughs> New Dur- I think it's New Berlin, Illinois. Anyways, um, so Arcane Concepts. He actually has some really grotesque masks, and they're they're kind of a unique look. Um, they're they're disturbing to say the least. So let's run our interview with him and check his workout. All right, so here we are with our Artist of the Week, a little feature we like to do to add some awareness to artists that are out there. And joining me today is Joshua Spradlin of Arcane Concepts out of Illinois. Hello, Joshua. Welcome to the show. And, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Joshua Spradlin. I am the uh, owner and artist at Arcane Concepts. It's a little side hustle I opened in uh, 2017. Um, I took a mask making class at our local Springfield Art Association back in 2016. Um, I got hooked, and I've been trying to do my own thing ever since. Cool. So what what exactly was it that kind of got you interested in doing masks in the first place? Um, Masks and special effects in general has been on my mind since I was a kid. Uh, Being in Illinois, there's not really an outlet for that kind of thing, and I never really knew where to go about getting information on that stuff. So when I heard about this half mask class at the Art Association, I I had to jump on it and take it. And, you know, within the first the first session, I was hooked and sculpted my first mask, and it's been downhill since. Very cool. All right. Um, so when you're working on a mask, where do you get your inspiration from? Where do you kind of get your ideas from? Do you see something in a movie and you kind of say, hey, that's kind of neat, or... You know, what's your, what's your process for coming up with the masks? Well, like most people, I think you get a lot of inspiration from movies and TV shows and comic books and things like that. Um, I tend to get a lot of inspiration from just random things I encounter in life, different textures that I'll see, you know, when I'm out on a walk or something like that. Um, nature provides far more variety than you can get in any movie or TV show. Um, there are some medical conditions that are just, they're horrible, but at the same time, they're fascinating because nature is flipping itself on its head and creating these forms and textures and shapes that you're not going to see unless there's a disease or there's a, 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 you know, a deformation or something specific had to happen for this result to happen to a human being or an animal, or, you know, just paint feeling on the side of a barn. There's a very specific set of steps that has to happen for that texture to be achieved. And being able to recreate some of those textures in a humanoid form, in a mask that someone can wear or display, 
is one of the challenges that I like to try to hit, hit head on. And I've been looking at your masks, and if I were to sum it up in one word, I would probably use the word gruesome. I mean, they're 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 pretty. Um, they they definitely look like something that a serial killer in his basement would construct out of his victims. Um, they they definitely have some disturbing disturbing look to them. Uh, I can imagine going through a haunt and having someone come out wearing that would be pretty pretty frightful. Um, you have you have wife and kids, family that that you live with. Uh, I've been married to my wife for twenty years. Uh, we're high school sweethearts. Uh, I have two boys, one sixteen and one eight. Um, I also work at a haunted house every year, so that's where you know a lot of what I make. I make wearable. I make it comfortable. I make it so you can see, and you can breathe. Because as a haunt actor, I need I need to be able to breathe. You got to be able to. You know, sweat your ass off. You know, when you're you're scaring the crap out of people for you know six seven hours a night. Uh, my family loves what I do. They're very supportive. My little eight year old, he comes down here and he does some little sculpting things once in a while with me, and he shows my stuff off to all his friends. So they don't. So they don't think you're like a complete weirdo and stuff. No. Well, I'm definitely a weirdo. I mean, kind of weirdo, weirdo in some kind. You know, do this kind of stuff, but. It's a healthy outlet, you know. It's it, it's sharing uh, a perspective on something. It's sharing art, and I that's what I consider all this stuff is. It's art, you know. People that collect, you know, fancy paintings and stuff may not consider it as art, but there's just as much time, skill, and effort that goes into what we do as there is to any painting that you see on a museum. It's just a different medium. Yeah. Now, aside from the haunt acting and the making masks. Are there any other hobbies that you uh, that you do? Maybe they're completely unrelated. Um, hobbies, um, I've known to wrench on cars and trucks. Uh, I was part of a team um, from 2007-2010. We built a uh, an electric car from the ground up for an uh, international competition, which we came in second place. Uh, so that was three or four years of solid work on weekends and evenings after work and things like that um i get my hands into pretty much anything that interests me really cool. i'm a car guy too and a jack of all trades so as far as the mask making is concerned where would you really like to see yourself five years from now five years um honestly i think i would just like to build some relationships uh with various haunts around the country i'd like to be a supplier of props and masks for actors and haunt, haunt scenes, and, um, even going as far as uh, in short independent features or films, things like that. I've done a couple of uh, masks for uh, independent horror films that are in production, uh, a couple of projects I've worked on with some friends. I did some uh, blood effects and special effects for those. Uh, but my main goal with masks is just to be uh, part of uh, the haunted house community and be a, kind of be a, a supplier to people who want unique masks and things for their haunts. Not something you see every day. You know, everybody's got the hockey mask and everybody's out there with the Michael Myers mask and a coverall suit. Uh, I like to see creative things. I like to see things that haven't been done before. And for your compliment, my stuff is gruesome and weird and disturbing, which is what you want if you're going to be scaring people that pay their good money to have an experience. Cool. And that being said, let's take a quick moment to take a look at some of Josh's work. Um, so check this stuff out. So there you go. You get a good view of uh, Josh's work here. Josh, hey, thank you for being a part of this. And um, is there anything you'd like to say or anything uh, before we shut this all down? Well, first, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity. I think what you're doing for some of us smaller 
artists and smaller makers. I think it's fantastic. Um, a lot of us don't have the, the, the time to be a social media, a presence on social media as much as we should. You know, we're busy making stuff, you know, and I, you know, I'm horrible with keeping up on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook posts and stuff because I'm trying to get stuff done. Um, a, a shout out uh, just to everybody that inspires me. There are a few mask makers that have uh, gave me some really good advice along the way. Lou Prancic is one of them. Todd Davis is another one. Is those guys have helped me with a couple of my sculpts and gave me honest opinions and feedback. Um, and it's really, it's a really neat community, mass maker community, because I have not talked to one yet that refused to provide some advice or some direction. It's been awesome, and you don't get that hardly anywhere else. You know, there's everybody's out to compete with everybody, but it seems like in the mass making community, everybody just wants to make everybody better, and you get better product, and you get more creative ideas and you get completely new concepts because of that cooperation. Um, if anybody uh, mentions seeing Arcane Concepts on your show, um, I'll, and they buy something, I'll ship it for free. Uh, another, um, I'm not sure when this will air, but I have a, my very first time as a vendor will be at the uh, Flashback Weekend show in uh, Rosemont, Illinois. It's the first weekend of August. It's a really big horror convention. Bruce Campbell's going to be there, Sam Raimi, Robert England. It's going to be a pretty big show. It's my first time vending. I'll have my first booth ever. If you're in the area, come out and say hi. And uh, tell, you know, say you, you saw me on your show, and I'll give you a free sticker pack. Excellent. We'll make sure that we plug that when that uh, weekend is coming up. So, well, hey, again, thank you very much for uh, coming on the show with us. Uh, and viewers, do me a favor, uh, jump on Facebook and look this gentleman up and be sure to check out his page. Give him some likes and shares and help kind of spread the word for him. And if you see something on there that you like, don't be afraid to buy from him. Remember, if you mentioned that you saw him on Monster Vision, he will give you free shipping on your product. So, uh, again, Josh, thank you very much and uh, wish you the best of luck. So let's get back to our regular show now. So there you have it. That was Joshua Spradlin. Super duper nice guy. Super duper humble. Uh, very talented. And I got to admit, man, that one that has kind of that mouth with the teeth is literally so grotesque. That that if I were in the woods in Alabama and I came across that, dude, I swear I would probably run all the way back to California. I mean, that is just ugh, gives me the willies. So definitely, guys, look him up. Give him some love. Give him lots of you know. Put, put a bunch of hearts on our little time line here so that we can see that y'all totally dig him so all right we got about 10 minutes left in the episode uh we're gonna go ahead and turn on the phone so we have open phone lines so if anybody wants to call on the call uh call and comment on what we talked about earlier or just join in um that's okay uh what we're gonna do is we are gonna discuss some of the plans for what we've got going on for some future episodes so um Let's see. So Natalie and I have been working on a lot of stuff kind of behind the scenes and putting a lot of plans together. And uh, Natalie, I'll let you start. Um, what kind of things is it that we're hooking up that we want to bring to the show going forward? Um, I am talking to local haunted houses about letting us come out and check them out. Yep. Yeah. So we're, our plan is to go to uh, at least one of the local haunted houses as they're setting up, and we want to do a little on-location filming uh, and kind of show a little behind the scenes. Uh, for those people that never worked in a haunt or never set one up, we want to do a little segment that kind of shows the work that goes into the prep, and then hopefully go back after when they're up and operating and actually kind of film a little walkthrough. Uh, we think that would be kind of a fun segment. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. What are some of the other things that we've been talking? Oh, um, there's a, um, supernatural investigative team that we have kind of reached out to a little bit. I haven't talked to them in a couple of weeks, but, um, we're going to be looking at doing a little, uh, Skype with them and talking a little bit about what they do. Plus there's also a local team here in Sacramento. I don't want to bring their name up yet because I haven't reached out to them yet. But what I'm really hoping to do is actually go on an investigation with them, shoot some of our own footage, maybe even have them come over to my house and check out 
the weird stuff going on here. So uh, that's kind of planned down the road. Um, what other things have we been talking about? <laughs> oh, there's been lots of talk. <laughs> I had an idea the other day, and I don't know if I can pull this off, but I'm going to sure try my best. I am going to try to reach out to Cassandra Peterson, Elvira herself, and tell her about what it is that we're doing and see if I can find any way for her to join me via Skype. I'm not going to expect her to be in costume and all that kind of stuff, but I would love if she was willing enough to give me 10 minutes of a Skype conversation that we can throw something together to put that on the show. And, you know, she does, she does all of the conventions and she does all that kind of travel. And I know she gets paid to do all that and stuff, but we are a zero budget type of operation. And, but we're also, you know, altruistic. So I, that's one of the things I've got on my list of things to do next week is to actually join, go to her website and find a way to contact her and reach out, maybe have her take a look at, some of these episodes, some of what we're doing, kind of get to understand our philosophy here. And maybe she'll say, yeah, you know what? I could, I can give you 10 minutes of Skype and that would just be awesome. Cause I grew up as a kid. I think she's the one that made me go into puberty to be honest with you. Cause I was right about that age, you know, but um, I, I just loved watching her show her, her gorgeousness and yet her corniness, her humor, her timing. It's just the best. So that's one of the things uh, that I'm working towards going forward. I wonder if there's anybody from uh, the fans of the show that would, you know, if they have any recommendations of folks that they oh, yeah. see you reach out to, they can call in. Or- Absolutely. Well, you know, there's also a couple other, uh, we'll call them YouTubers, um, you know, uh, um, uh, influencers? Yeah, you know, that are kind of doing the same thing that I'm doing with a little bit different of a spin to that I've kind of thrown a couple of things out there saying, hey, why don't you come on our show and, and you know, spend some time with us and stuff. So absolutely, if there are other um, YouTubers, uh, influencers, or other performers that do these kind of live shows that you think are really great, that you really love, definitely let us know, put it in the comments, and uh, we will check them out and reach out to them and maybe bring them on our show or maybe we'll go on theirs or something like that. So uh, again, one of the biggest goals is to just bring all of these things your mask makers your haunt owners your makeup artists your gothic artists all these kind of things together and that reminds me i wanted to say this at the end of the interview but i forgot to the last three episodes we've had an artist of the week and they've been mask makers i don't want you to think that's the only thing that we feature if you are a makeup artist and you would like to be featured on the show get in touch with me and let me know if you create art pieces of any kind as long as it's kind of gothic and weird and all that kind of stuff we want to see it and we will do the same thing for the artist of the week. it's just artist of the week that's what we're looking for so it's not just masks it's anything at all that falls into that kind of genre of creepiness so what about uh, puppets or clowns puppets and clowns yeah absolutely i have <laughs> i know i've reached out to other makeup artists and other people i know that are in the industry so um hopefully they will get in touch very cool very cool um all right so and and then of course if we do have the ghost team come to my house i talked with my wife about it she's okay with it happening um she's gonna stay yes yeah she actually said i told her about the idea of reaching out with the ouija board and she's like okay you're asking for trouble and i was like you know what i'm not afraid of it but we both agreed that if we do have a team come over to kind of check out our house we do not want them to do any kind of smudging or any kind of cleansing or anything like that Uh, we both absolutely agree on that and the stance that we take on it is Again, I have personally full-on seen a ghost. It ran at me. I jumped out of its way. I haven't gotten to that part of the story, but I will. Um, So I have no doubt that there's something out there. I don't know if I can explain it as being an afterlife or maybe a glimpse into an alternate reality or whatever it was. But the way I look at it is, since we don't truly understand it, how do we know that they don't want to be here? How do we know that cleansing them doesn't send them to a worse place? I mean, and, and you know, the stuff that we've had going on here, although it startles you at times, 
it's never been anything. No one's had bruises or scratches, no objects flying across the room that can hurt you. We haven't had any of that kind of activity. So the way I look at it is, it seems that the entities that are here are pretty peaceful. So why, why evict them, you know? So anyways, that's just my thought. So, all right. Well, it looks like we're coming up pretty close to the end of the show, so uh, I guess we will go ahead and wrap this up. Um, you guys, thank you all for watching. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, Jarrett Von Jekyll. Please go watch his short film, The Tooth Fairy. It really is worth the time. You'll really enjoy it. You'll probably feel the same I do, that you want to see more of it. Um, also, Joshua Spradlin. Make sure you look him up on Facebook. Super duper nice guy, and if you like, if you like his stuff, purchase from him so absolutely and don't forget he said if you mention that you saw it here he'll give you free shipping so saves you a few bucks so um obviously you're here on my page watching this live so be sure you give us likes and loves and all that kind of stuff uh, also make sure you visit a thousand word studios uh that is natalie's facebook page and take a look at her work and all the things that she does um also you can find uh uncle monster on youtube uh there's a there's a link i believe up there um when I take my vacation, I will be putting a lot of editing work into finally finishing some of these tutorials I got going on. So in the near future, you'll start to see that populate. So make sure when you go to my YouTube page, you like it, subscribe it, hit the little bell so you get notifications because that stuff is coming very soon. Um, also, uh, again, we opened up our merch store. We've got some really cool designs. Uh, so go there and check it out. They actually have a sale going on right now. You can get these very individual personalized t-shirts, not personalized, but, uh, you know, unique t-shirts that uh, aren't going to be available anywhere else 13 bucks and everything that you buy there will go to supporting keeping this show running uh it's it's not cheap to do anyone that's in this hobby knows making these masks and doing all this kind of stuff alone costs a bunch of money i don't actually sell a whole lot because i do a whole lot of other things um but doing this whole show sure adds a lot of expense to this hobby so if you could support it and buy a cool hoodie or a t-shirt or something we obviously appreciate you very much um and also if you're a mask artist and you would like to set up a your own t public type shop reach out to me they have a special plan going on where if you started up as me a referral i'll get a little kickback so it's a little you know you scratch my back i scratch yours but if you need help even coming up with some graphics I am more than happy to volunteer what I can to maybe help design a couple of graphics for you to get something out there. So again, this is part of the whole community of the artists helping artists. So uh, just reach out and let me know. Uh, coming up next week, uh, we've got a couple of topics that we're going to talk about. Number one, uh, we're going to do a little airbrush comparison. I have seen a lot of people on different groups talk about um, the Iwata Neo versus the Iwata Eclipse. I actually own both of them. We're going to tear them down and take a look at them and see why it is everyone poo-poos the Neo and why everyone praises the uh, Eclipse. The real question is, how much difference really is there to them? I'll show you on the next episode. Plus, we are going to talk about the Mandela Effect, one of my favorite paranormal things at all. If you don't know what the Mandela Effect is, you definitely want to look it up. Uh, it's a rabbit hole that you can go down for hours and it's a lot of fun if you have a mandela effect thing that you are certain was changed on a different timeline call our number leave a message we'll add it to our thing and uh you will get entries in the fart jar oh and that reminds me before we sign off i promised a fart jar drawing guys can you collect the fart jar please and pass it on over to me please I was going to let one of y'all do it, but I realized this is the first one. I should actually do this. Uh, thank you very much. All right. So this is our fan appreciation, recognition, and thanks jar. Uh, Marty made this little sign right here. And basically the way this works is... When I start to see names that people are doing a lot of sharing and doing a lot of commenting and all that, basically being supportive of us and our efforts here, they get their names put on a little post-it note and dropped into the fart jar. Now, it 
doesn't mean that if you share one time you get one it means if I start to recognize that name I might put you in there five or six times this jar right now like I said earlier is probably two-thirds of it are five different people's names but there is a lot of names that are in here so the way this works is I'm gonna randomly draw a name from this just like any other drawing you have until 8 p.m. tomorrow to reach out to me via regular Facebook Messenger. Please do not message the Decaffeinated Designs Facebook page. That doesn't necessarily always come through right away and I don't get notifications. You got to reach out to me via my personal page. So look me up. Uh, but here we are. We're going to reach into here and this is going to be for one of our um, brand new Ouija board design shirts. I will find out what size you need and what your address is, and I will even pay the shipping to get it to you. So, going in, mixing them all up, and make sure I just have one. In my hand here, we have Heather Beeler Reeds. There we go. Okay, Heather, the clock starts now. You have till 8 p.m. tomorrow to message me, and uh, and then I will get all the information to get this shirt off to you. Um, we have another promotion that is in the works when it comes to the shirts, and I haven't put all the details in effect yet, but let's just say that we're working on a program where if you do go to the merch shop and you do buy a shirt and you take a picture of yourself wearing it and put it on the Facebook fan club page, you're going to get a little something that uh, is going to be worth the effort. So once I flesh everything all out, I'll make a post on Facebook. So there we go with that. So, all right, let's get this thing closed up because we're just after nine. Again, thank you all for watching. Um, you know, we're just three amateurs in a shed doing this and having fun. Uh, we have a passion for the creepy and the weird, and we're trying to make sure that we introduce enough other people out there that have this passion for the creepy and the weird. So take part in the show. Uh, let's play make believe all together and let's just have some fun because there's enough really crappy stuff going out there in the world that at least here it's going to be an hour of, you know, some fun fun and some entertainment and stuff and uh uh yeah we'll, we'll 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 build this thing into something that everyone absolutely loves so uh in closing everyone please go out to the world and be good humans and as always stay scary my friends and good night
you're still here? The show's over. Go create something. Go on.